For centuries, historians and archaeologists have puzzled over the many mysteries of Stonehenge. The prehistoric monument that took Neolithic builders an estimated 1,500 years to erect. Located in southern England, it is comprised of roughly 100 massive upright stones placed in a circular layout. Modern academia has yet to conclusively determine what purposes it served and how a civilization without modern technology, or even the will, produced the mighty monument. Its construction is all the more baffling because while the sandstone slabs of its outer ring hail from local quarries, scientists have traced the bluestones that make up its inner ring all the way to the Priscilla Hills and Wells some 200 miles from where Stonehenge sits on the Salisbury Plain. Archaeologists believe England's most iconic prehistoric ruin was built in several stages, with the earliest constructed 5,000 or more years ago. First, Neolithic Britons used primitive tools to dig a massive circular ditch and bank, or hinge, on the Salisbury Plain. Deep pits dating back to that era and located within the circle, known as Aubrey Holes, may have once held a ring of timber posts, according to some scholars. Several hundred years later, it is thought, Stonehenge's builders hoisted an estimated 80 non-indigenous bluestones, 43 of which remain today, into standing positions and placed them in either a horseshoe or circular formation. During the third phase of construction, which took place around 2000 BC, Sarsen sandstone slabs were arranged into an outer crescent or ring. Some were assembled into the iconic three-piece structures called trilithons and stand tall in the center of Stonehenge. Some 50 sarsen stones are now visible on the site, which may have once contained many more. Radiocarbon dating suggests that work continued at Stonehenge until roughly 1600 BC, with the blue stones in particular being repositioned multiple times. Stonehenge's sarsens, of which the largest weighs more than 40 tons and rises 24 feet, were likely sourced from quarries 25 miles north of the Salisbury Plain and transported with the help of sleds and ropes. They may even have already been scattered in the immediate vicinity when the monument's Neolithic architect first broke ground there. The smaller blue stones, on the other hand, have been traced all the way to the Priscilla Hills and Wales some 200 miles away from Stonehenge. How then did prehistoric builders without sophisticated tools or engineering haul these boulders, which weigh up to four tons, over such a great distance? Even if we seed that humans from that era could have constructed the site using existing technology, the purpose of its construction remains highly debated to this day. According to the 12th century writer Geoffrey of Monmouth, Stonehenge is the handiwork of the wizard Merlin. In the mid-5th century, the story goes, hundreds of British nobles were slaughtered by the Saxons and buried on the Salisbury Plain. Hoping to erect a memorial to his falling subjects, King Ariolus Ambrosius sent an army to Ireland to retrieve a stone known as the Giant's Ring which ancient giants had built from magical African bluestones. The soldiers successfully defeated the Irish but failed to move the stones, so Merlin used his sorcery to spirit them across the sea and arrange them above the mass grave. Legend has it that Ambrosius and his brother Uther, King Arthur's father, are buried there as well. In the 1960s, the astronomer Gerald Hawkins suggested that the cluster of megalithic stones operated as an astronomical calendar, with different points corresponding to astrological phenomena such as solstices, equinoxes, and eclipses. The purpose of its construction can actually be linked to the Sumerian pantheon of gods known as the Anunnaki. In the late 4th millennium BC, Enki's son Marduk returned to Egypt where he became known as Ra. He and his priest from the city of Thebes warred against his half-brother Ningizida, known as Thoth, who ruled from Heliopolis and Memphis. After 350 years of conflict, Enki, known as Ta, ordered Ningizida to cede Egypt to Marduk. Ningizida eventually arrived in Britain around 2900 BC where he selected a site on the Salisbury Plain to build Stonehenge 1 for the purpose of astronomical computation. 
The theory posits that Ningazita returned to the site twice to rebuild and upgrade Stonehenge 2 and 3 from 2100 and 2000 BC. In 1986, Stonehenge was added to UNESCO's Register of World Heritage Sites. Stonehenge has undergone several restorations over the years, and some of its boulders have been set in concrete to prevent collapse. The hypotheses regarding Stonehenge have only increased over the centuries. But much like the Great Pyramid of Giza, there is no decisive conclusion about the purpose of the site even among mainstream academia. Gobekli Tepe is an archaeological site and multi-phase tell, which is one of the oldest known Mesolithic structures located in the southeastern Anatolia region of Turkey. The main structures identified have been dated to the pre-pottery Neolithic period from around the 10th millennium BC, with further remains of smaller buildings to the 9th millennium BC. Archaeologists have determined that the tell contains three distinct layers with layer 3 consisting of circular compounds and nearly 200 T-shaped limestone pillars, which were detected through geophysical surveys. The layout of Gobekli follows a geometric pattern in the form of an equilateral triangle that connects enclosures, suggesting that the early builders had a rudimentary knowledge of geometry. In 1963, the T-shaped pillars were initially interpreted to be grave markers dating from the aceramic Neolithic period by researchers from the Istanbul University and the University of Chicago. From 1996 to 2014, archaeologist Klaus Schmidt led the excavations at the site and interpreted the site to be a Stone Age mountain sanctuary. Many of the pillars are decorated with pictograms and carved animal reliefs such as lions, foxes, snakes, insects, birds, and bulls, suggesting at the time of layer 3 the surrounding landscape was most likely forested and contained a variety of animal life. A few pillars are also believed to represent stylized humans, or possibly a deity, that has loincloths on the lower half of the pillar and arms. By layer 2 during the pre-pottery Neolithic period, the circular compounds gave way to rectangular buildings with doorless and windowless rooms. The tradition of constructing T-shaped pillars continued in this period, with the most notable being a pair decorated with fierce-looking lions and a pillar that depicts three different figures reminiscent of the much later totem poles from North America. The final layer of Gobekli sees the site change in function from a ceremonial center to one of agriculture and farming. These stone monuments were deliberately backfilled sometime after 8000 BC under flint gravel and debris, remaining in situ until their rediscovery many thousands of years later. Of course, many mainstream scholars argue that Gobekli is the oldest temple discovered to date that was used for ritualistic ceremony. Others argue that it's the oldest observatory found thus far. In our assessment, it is likely both. Author Andrew Collins posits that the Watchers of the Book of Enoch and the Anunnaki of Mesopotamia are in fact memories of the Gobekli builders and their impact on its rise of civilization. He believes the builders possessed a sophisticated cosmology and shaman utilized the structures to enter the sky world to counter potential cataclysmic events. Quote, Everywhere you look at Gobekli Tepe, there is confirmation that its builders shared a sense of connection with the cosmos. From the strange glyphs and ideograms on the various stones, which include symbols resembling the letters C and H, to the twelve-fold division of stones in the various enclosures, there is powerful evidence that these 11,000-year-old temples resonate the influence of the celestial heavens. The H glyphs seem to relate to the shaman's journey from this world to the other world, while the sea glyphs are almost certainly slim lunar crescents signifying the transition from one lunar cycle to the next. Even the design of the enclosures appears to have cosmic significance. Invariably, the structures are ovid in shape, 
with a length to breadth ratio of 5 to 4. Numbers that could hint at Gobekli Builder's profound awareness of cosmic time cycles not usually thought to have been understood until the age of Plato. Another novel theory about Gobekli put forth by Stephen Childs argues that this site served the funeral needs of the surrounding area. Corpses were placed on these platforms inviting vultures and other meat-eating birds to deflesh the bodies. Some ancient cultures believed high-flying carrion birds transported the flesh of the dead up to the heavens. While the potential ritualistic and cosmogenic purposes seem to be logical explanations, the fact that only 5% of the site has been excavated makes any such conclusions premature at best in our opinion. Since 1997, archaeologists have been working at the Karahan Tepe site, which is often called the sister site of Gobekli Tepe. The site is located roughly 35 kilometers east of Gobekli and is now considered part of a constellation of contemporaneous settlements that extends over 100 kilometers and includes at least 11 other unexcavated sites. The 11,400-year-old monumental site which is about 200 years younger than Gobekli, is one of the world's oldest villages, challenging the prevailing science on when and why humankind first settled down. Karahan Tepe includes homes within a vast ritualistic complex that demonstrates hunter-gatherers built permanent settlements long before the advent of agriculture, 10,000 years ago. Sacred and secular spaces were built simultaneously at Karahan Tepe, where humans dwelled year-round for about 1,500 years, and no remnants of farmed vegetation have been found. Scientists long believed that the domestication of plants and animals around 10,000 years ago is what compelled humans to adopt a sedentary lifestyle, and that the boom in food production allowed them to develop complex societies and lay the foundations of civilization. But the mounting evidence that Stone Age people built permanent structures for spiritual and cosmogenic rather than strictly essential pursuits is disrupting conventional thinking that they lacked a large-scale society with division of labor and shared ritualistic motifs. The Neolithic era coinciding with the end of the Ice Age marks humankind's dramatic shift from foraging to farming. The foundation for today's civilization, from family law to inheritance to the state and bureaucracy, were all struck in the Neolithic period. Karahan Tepe's circular rooms were planned out in advance and the very skillful processing of bedrock reveals an impressive prehistoric architectural engineering. Building multiple structures with different purposes is the reflection of a complicated belief system. It is not possible to talk about religion in its true sense, but we see a set of distinct, limited rituals that are radically set forth. Karahan houses one of the most monumental and earliest examples of phallic symbolism, which consists of 11 giant penises carved from the bedrock and watched over by a bearded head with a serpent's body that emerges from the wall. Almost entirely absent are female figures. Stone reliefs of wildlife range from insects to mammals and include attacking beasts gripping men's heads. There are more depictions of humans than found thus far at Gobekli Tepe, indicating that humans had begun to see themselves as distinct from the animal world. Scores of T-shaped stela, an abstract rendering of the human form, have been unearthed at Karahan Tepe as well. Just like Gobekli, at the end of Karahan Tepe's lifespan, its inhabitants painstakingly buried their temples. As we alluded to earlier, Many more years of excavations and research must be conducted to determine what exactly Karahan was used for. However, researchers think that when they ultimately get to Karahan Tepe's excavation center, it will be much older than 12,000 years. Archaeologists have excavated around 1% of the 60,000 square meter site since 2019. With 5% of Gobekli, 
and 1% of Carahan excavated, it is hard to say which one will actually turn out to be the oldest. But, in the archive's opinion, the distinction is purely academic, as the saying goes.